Happy Thursday, friends. Hope you're having a great week. Hey, day and a half to the weekend is here, thank God. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for it. Hope everything's going good. Hope the weather's good. We're actually having some good weather here in uh, Southeast Texas. Finally got those fall days in the 60s. The fall here, down here in the South. When it gets in the 60s, very big deal, especially if it's been 100 degrees the last few months. Anyway, got a great weekend of football coming up. Go over some of the things that happened last weekend. Go over things coming up this weekend. Before we start, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. We'll get down to some news. Oregon head coach Dan Lanning says those three fourth down failures versus Washington is his fault. Because um, he's the one that made the decision on those. So he says, yeah, they're my fault. Basically, that's why we lost. Great game, though. That's a really good game. Uh, Georgia tight end, Brock Bowers, talk of the town this past couple of days. Uh, he had ankle surgery, expected to miss four to six weeks. He suffered the ankle sprain in uh, that game last week versus Vanderbilt. Great player, dynamic, electric. I mean, every adjective you can think. Um, guy's incredible. But I don't think they're going to miss him. They got a lot of playmakers on that team, so they should be okay. Um... South Carolina coach Shane Beamer, see what happened to him? Uh, broke a bone in his foot <laughs> after he kicked something he shouldn't have after that Florida loss last weekend. Uh, he said he was frustrated that the Gamecocks blew a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, so he got mad after the game, kicked something, broke a bone in his foot. Uh, let that be a lesson. If, if it can break, <laughs> don't, hit, don't hit or kick anything. Uh, Florida quarterback Graham Mertz threw two touchdown passes in the final five minutes to win that game, if you didn't see it. Uh, I didn't see it. I was watching something else. Uh, Iowa tied in. Eric All, man, out for the season. Torn ACL in the Wisconsin game last Saturday. Uh, man, that sucks. Hope you get better, man. I really do. That, that sucks. Air Force, they are sitting at 6-0. and uh, But starting quarterback Zach... Zach Lurie, Lurie, Lurie. Uh, he'll be out for a while after an uh, injury to his knee Saturday night against Wyoming. That was a damn good game. Uh, coach, coach, the coach, Troy Calhoun says he doesn't know how long he's going to be out. Uh, that sucks, though, because they're on a roll. Uh, very, very, very good team this year, Air Force has. Uh, hey, LSU, speaking of uh, service academies, LSU plays Army Saturday night. LSU is paying tribute to Army. I've seen them. Go look them up. Their end zones are camouflaged. I mean, it looks great. It really does. Go check it out online if you get a chance. So good for them to uh, pay homage to Army. Uh, looks like Duke quarterback Riley Leonard looks like he's going to play against Florida State. So that's good news for them. That should be a good game, if he, especially if he's coming back. Uh, just wonder how... I don't know, I guess you could say what percentage he's going to be at. Is he going to be at back at 100%, 80%, 75%? Because that can make a difference in that game. But either way, I think it should be a pretty good game. Uh, Kansas, they're ranked number one in the preseason uh, basketball poll, AP poll. So no surprise there. They're always good. Uh, last bit of basketball news, Fairfield men's basketball coach Jay Young. He has resigned. He's had four consecutive losing seasons. Uh, assistant coach Chris Casey, he's going to be the interim coach until they find a new one. So uh, if you're a Fairfield fan, after four consecutive losing seasons, you might be happy about this. Um, I don't know. I don't know nothing about the guy. I don't know how if he's cool or what or any of that stuff. All right, so um, go over some games that happened last week. Uh Tuesday, last two, going back to last Tuesday, uh, Coastal Carolina beat, not this past Tuesday, but the Tuesday before, Coastal Carolina beat App State, uh, Liberty beat Jacksonville State. Uh, Thursday, did you see that Houston-West Virginia game last Thursday night? Boy, that was crazy. Um, Houston won, winning in the fourth, 35-32, with 22 seconds left. West Virginia scores a touchdown on a 50-yard TD catch. From Garrett Green to Hudson Clement. So you're thinking, all right, game's going to be over. Uh, Mountaineers were up by four. West Virginia kicks off. Um, they get Houston gets some good field position. 
Uh, Donovan Smith throws to the outside, gets him closer down the field. Um, three seconds left. Smith chunks up a Hail Mary, throws 49-yard Hail Mary to Steven Johnson, who uh, that was his second TD catch. He c- catches the Hail Mary. Houston wins the game. Crazy, 41-39. Uh, University of Houston's Matthew Golden, he returned a kickoff for 100 yards in that game. Pretty impressive back in the first quarter. Uh, UH's Donovan Smith, four touchdown passes, one rushing TV, TV, TD. He had a great game. Um, West Virginia, though, all the categories, yards and all that, they were a heck of a lot better than Houston was. But, I mean, Houston had to win on the Hail Mary, so there you go. Um, they were 13 for 19 on third down. West Virginia was so they had a pretty good pretty good game. They just lost it in the last few seconds. Happens sometimes. Remember Stanford, Cal uh, was a Colorado, Michigan, a couple others. Sometimes those cool things just happen. Uh, Tulane beat Memphis 31-21 last Friday night. Uh, Michael Pratt for Tulane. He had TD pass. He rushed for a TD pass. Um, Makai Hughes 20, 26 catches. 130 yards in a TD. Uh, Tulane's defense had two picks. Tulane five and one now. Remember they lost that game to Ole Miss. Lost in the fourth quarter. Otherwise they'd be undefeated. Uh, SMU moved to four and two. They beat Eastern. They beat East Carolina 31 to 10. Fresno State got back to their winning ways. They beat Utah State 37 uh, 32. Last Friday night, did you see Colorado Stanford? Oh my lord, Colorado. Good lord, man. Uh, blew a 29-point lead at halftime. Uh, Stanford came back in the second half, outscored the Buffaloes 19 to nothing in the third quarter, and then 17 to seven in the fourth quarter. Uh, went to overtime. Stanford won in the second overtime, 46-43. Travis Hunter though came back for Colorado, so that was cool. 140 receiving yards, two touchdowns. It's like he picked up where he left off. Uh, Dion was pissed. Yeah, he. <laughs> He was, he was really, really, really pissed. Um, one thing that helped Stanford, too, is their defense. Four sacks and an interception. Um, Colorado's O-line, they, they kind of need some help there. So, uh, but I, th- I still think Colorado's going to go to a bowl game. They're a heck of a lot better last, than they were the last few years. So, uh, On Saturday, Florida State took care of business, being Syracuse 41-3. Travis, 284 passing yards, a touchdown. Also ran for two touchdowns. Remember, they got Duke Saturday. Riley Leonard's coming back for Duke. Could be a pretty good one. Uh, Michigan State was beating Rutgers 24-6 until the fourth quarter. When Rutgers outscored the Spartans 21 to nothing. I know Michigan State also, uh, I think they had a muff punt. And that's kind of what started the downhill run there for them. And the uphill run for Rutgers. Uh, Indiana, man, they led Michigan 7 to nothing in the second quarter. Uh, then Michigan got pissed, unleashed on them. 52 unanswered points, Michigan won. Uh, Michigan's O-line, they allowed four sacks in this game, though. Crazy. Uh, Ohio State all over Purdue, 41-7. to McCord, three touchdown passes, two of them to uh, Cade Stover. Marvin Harrison Jr., six catches, 105 yards and a touchdown. Purdue didn't score their seven points until the fourth quarter. That's nice of Ohio State to let them get on the board there in the fourth. Uh, like we mentioned, Georgia beat Vanderbilt 37-20. Not sure how long Brock Bowers is going to be out. Carson Beck, TD pass and ran for a touchdown. Uh, DeJuan Edwards, 146 rushing yards and a touchdown. Arkansas, almost. Man, y'all had them. Y'all had them, Arkansas. Uh, Alabama ends up winning 24-21. Bama led 21-6 at halftime. Arkansas, Arkansas outscored them 15-3 in the second half, if you didn't see that one. Uh, K.J. Jefferson, 150 passing yards, two touchdowns. Um, kicker Cam Little for Arkansas, seven points. That helped out a lot in that close score. Uh, Bama's Milro, Milro, 238 passing yards, two touchdowns. Their defense had five sacks. Arkansas's defense had four sacks. So I don't know if the defenses are playing great or the old lines are playing poor. I don't know. Um, quick question. Arkansas, K.J. Jefferson, Mississippi State, Will Rogers, two good quarterbacks. Do you think those two are on the wrong teams? Uh, do you think that if they were on another team, that team would be doing a lot better? Because if you ask me, Arkansas and Hawaii, 
They mimic, they mimic, mimic each other. Uh, great offenses, score points. They just can't score enough points to win or the defense doesn't help them out. Those two, those two teams are very similar. I mean, it's crazy. Go look, go look up offensive stats and all that. It's crazy. Uh, Iowa State, hey, look at them back on the winning track. Four and three now, beat Cincinnati 30 to 10. Cincinnati seemed to take a nosedive. James Madison, they are six and zero now, beat Georgia Southern 41 to 13. Uh, Jordan McLeod for James Madison, 259 passing yards, three touchdowns on that one. Their defense had three sacks and two interceptions. Toledo, they're six and one, beat Buffalo 13 to six. Uh, let's see what else we got here. They are 10 for 8. Toledo is 10 for 18 on third down in that game. Utah beat Cal 34-14. Um, this is all rushing for Utah. Sion Vaki, 158 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Ja Jaquinton Jackson, 94 rushing yards and a touchdown. Rising really needs to come back from that injury. Um, I heard rumors he may be I haven't heard anything confirmed about that, but without him, they're definitely they're going to lose the game. I mean, you know they are. They're just not putting up those offensive numbers without him uh, this year. It's crazy. Hey, Maryland, losing to Illinois. What happened? Illinois' offense is not that good, but they beat Illinois beat them 27-24. Uh, they won by outscoring Maryland in the third quarter, 10-7, if you go back and look at all the numbers. Uh, but... Maryland's Tolua, 266 passing yards, two touchdowns. He was sacked three times by the Illinois defense. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. Maryland, remember? Great game against Ohio State. and kind of fell apart, and uh, they fell apart here too. So, Illinois beating Maryland. Uh, Virginia Tech beat Wake Forest 30-13. Oklahoma State beat Kansas 39-32. Boy, they are missing Daniel. Uh, Kansas actually led by one at halftime. Cowboys outscored them 15-7 to in the second half of that one. Bean, backup quarterback, he had a good game for KU. Uh, threw five touchdown passes in this game. Two to Mason Fairchild. So, I mean, he's a good quarterback. Two to Quentin Skinner. 410 passing yards. Bowman for Oklahoma State. 336 passing yards, two touchdowns. Ollie Gordon to second. 168 rushing yards and a touchdown. He also had 116 receiving yards and a touchdown for Oklahoma State. Crazy. Uh, Oklahoma State's defense, four sacks, two interceptions. They are now 4-2 and two and improving. Uh, look like they're going to be dead there for a while, but they're starting to put things together, uh, win some games. Uh, let's see. Penn State wiped out UMass 63 to nothing. Uh, Drew Aller, three touchdown passes, ran for a touchdown. Theo Johnson, two touchdown catches. Daquan Hardy, two punt returns for a touchdown. 56-yarder and a 68-yarder. They've got Ohio State this weekend. If you're a Penn State fan, is this your year? Is this year you're going to do it? Uh, I guess we're going to see. Uh, Miami of Ohio, they're 6-1. and one. They beat Western Michigan 34-21. Washington, Oregon, man, what a game. Washington won 36-33 on a TD pass from Penix Jr. to Rome Anzu, Anuzi with 143 left on the clock. Great game, back and forth. They traded punches. Defenses both stepped up and made plays when they had to in this one. Um, Penix Jr., 22 for 37, 302 yards, four touchdowns. He threw a pick. Dylan Johnson, 20 rushes, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Um, Odunzi, Oduns, butchered his name. Eight catches, 128 yards, two touchdowns. Hell of a game for him. Uh, Polk, six catches for 118 yards. Uh, Bo Nix for Oregon, 33 for 44, 337 yards, two touchdowns. Bucky Irving, 22 rushes, 127 yards and a touchdown. Troy Franklin, eight catches, 154 yards and a touchdown for the Ducks. Oregon was 10 for 16 on third down, 0 for 3 on fourth down. Went back to what Lanning said. It's my fault, those fourth down plays. Uh, Washington, 5 for 11 on third down, 2 for 3 on fourth down. That could have been the factor right there. Because um, Oregon outrushed and outpassed Washington in this game. Uh, Washington also had more than 100, or Washington also had more than 100. Oregon, I'm sorry. I'm getting mixed up here. Oregon 
also had more than 100 total yards in Washington. Oregon did. So they beat them across the categories. Um, just came out on Washington's side on this one. And defense stepped up after that last touchdown. Florida beat South Carolina 41-39. Frank Beamer broke his foot afterwards. Or not Frank Beamer. Shane Beamer broke his foot after bounds after. Broke his foot afterwards kicking something. Damn. It's like I've been drinking or something. Uh, Florida Smurts, three touchdown passes. Freaking Texas A&M, man. I've about had it with these guys. Uh, Tennessee beats them 20-13. Aggies led 10-7 at the half. Tennessee outscored them 13-3 in the second half, starting with a 39-yard punt return for a touchdown by D. Williams. Done. I'm done. I'm off the Jimbo train. If he comes back next year somehow, I don't give a crap what they do. I'm done until they get rid of that bum. Out of here. Go. TCU beat BYU 44-11. Troy is 5-2. They beat Army 19-0. Army goes to LSU Saturday. Florida Atlantic beat USF 56-14. Um, Florida Atlantic led 21-14 at the half. Then they scored 35 unanswered. So they know, you know that make Tom Herman happy. Iowa, back to its uh, baseball scores. They beat Wisconsin 15-6. Uh, the big play was Hawkeyes with Sean Williams. Had an 82-yard touchdown run in that one. <laughs> He ran for 174 total. Uh, Deacon Hill, only 37 passing yards. Uh, Drew Stevens, the kicker. He may have been the hero of the game. Seven points in this one. Uh, Iowa, only nine first downs. Man, what's this going to do to Fair and Son? Remember, he signed that contract. He's got to score at least 24 points a game. Was it two or three this year? He hasn't done that. I mean, they won, but well, except the uh, Penn State game, but... What are they going to do with them? Are they going to keep him, get rid of him? Uh, Wisconsin, 18 first downs in this one. Both had under 325 total yards in this one, in this game. Uh, Iowa, 6 and 1. Wisconsin, 4 and 2 in Luke Fickle's first year. Northern Illinois, they handed Ohio their second loss of the season. Uh, they won 23 to 13. Northern Illinois' kicker, Canaan Woodhill. 11 points in this game. That was kind of a theme last weekend. The kickers really came through when their teams needed them. Uh, Northern Illinois defense, three interceptions and a fumble. Only one penalty for 15 yards. That helps a lot. That helps you to win the game. Ohio had seven penalties for 70 yards. Uh, UNLV, they're 5-1 and one after beating Nevada. Remember how it used to be the other way around the last several years? Nevada would beat UNLV. Well, UNLV's kind of turned the tables. They beat them 45-27. UNLV was 11 for 18 on third downs in that game. Nevada, 0-6. Man, that's crazy. They're usually a pretty decent team. Uh, Pitt beat Louisville. I couldn't believe that when I saw that score. 38-21, giving Louisville their first loss of the season. Louisville led 21-14 at halftime. Pitt scored 24 unanswered in the, in the second half. Uh, MJ Devonshire, he had an 86-yard pick six back in the third quarter. Um, Louisville, if you look at the numbers, were better in most categories than Pitt. Pitt still found a way to win it, so that was pretty good for them. Uh, Arizona. Arizona's really turned the tide. They beat Washington State 44-6. to um, Washington State, no Washington State, Washington State scored in the first quarter. That was it. It was all Arizona from there. Uh, Wildcats running back Jonah Coleman, three rushing touchdowns, 10 for 17 on third down. Is what the Wildcats managed. Um, Washington State, 4 for 11. Arizona defense, two interceptions, two fumbles, two sacks, held Washington State to 35 rushing yards and 199 passing yards. Uh, people on the radio talk about, is the desert swarm back? Remember that 30 years ago, you old school guys like me? That Arizona defense, they called the desert swarm. Incredible defense. People were saying, hey, desert swarm all over. Uh, Arizona, 4-3 and three now. They've really turned things around. Uh, the one I watched, LSU beat Auburn 48-18. LSU defense actually played good. Uh, not superb, but they played better than they have been. Even the secondary, who's been getting run over, thrown over all year. They actually had a decent game. Uh, offense played great as usual. Jet Daniels, 20-27. 20 325 yards, uh, three touchdowns, threw a pick. Ran for 93 yards. Diggs, 
Emory Jr. and Williams all have rushing touchdowns for LSU. Uh, Karen Lacey, four catches, 111 yards, touchdown. Neighbors, 89 receiving yards and a touchdown. Um, Auburn's Peyton Thorne, 12 for 23, 102 yards, no touchdowns. They were held to 293 total yards by LSU. They were 3 for 12 on third down in that one. Uh, Kansas State, 4 and 2 now. They beat Texas Tech 38 to 21. Actually, a three-point game at the half, but Kansas State pulled it out. Air Force, like we said, 6-0 now. They beat Wyoming 34-27. Um, Zach Lear, though, got hurt. They don't know how long he's going to be out. Uh, Wyoming was up 21-17 at the half on this one. Air Force outscored them 17-6 in the second half. It was actually tied at 27 with 231 left when Air Force's John Lee Eldridge ran for a 58-yard touchdown on that one to win the game. Um, Air Force only had one penalty in this game. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, Zach, uh, Zach Lair, see how long he's going to be out. Uh, Texas State, they've really turned things around too. They're five and two. They came back from 11 points down in the fourth quarter to beat Louisiana Monroe 21 20. Georgia State's five and one. They beat Marshall 41 24. Marshall's still a good team though. They're four and two. North Carolina beats Miami 41 31. Uh, Drake Bay. I don't think the guy has a bad game this year. Remember last year he had so-so games and great games and a so-so game. Seems to be having a good game every year, every week. Um, Miami actually led 17 to 14 at the half. Tar Heels outscored them 27 to 14 in the second half. Drake May 17 for 33, 273 yards for touchdowns. Uh, he was sacked five times by the Miami defense, but overcame it. Uh, Marion Hampton, 197 rushing yards. Touchdown and a TD catch for the Tar Heels. Devontae Walker, six catches, 132 yards, three touchdowns. Hell of a game for him. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke for the Hurricanes, 31 for 48, 391 yards, four touchdowns. Two of them to Xavier Restopro, so he did have a good game. Uh, UNC's defense, they had three sacks, two interceptions, two fumbles. NC, NC had a uh, 14 penalties. For 147 yards in this game. Still one. Uh, Miami, 3 for 11 on third down. Only 91 yards rushing. Remember those good backs they used to have? Like Frank Gore and some of those others? I don't know. I don't know about this year. Uh, Missouri beat Kentucky 38-21. Kentucky was actually winning 21-20 in the fourth. Missouri scored 18 in the fourth quarter to win. Uh, Cook. Touchdown pass, ran for a touchdown. Uh, Kentucky's Leary, two touchdown passes and ran for a touchdown. Missouri's defense had four sacks, <clears throat> two interceptions, fumble recovery. Kentucky, 14 penalties for 122 yards. Uh, Missouri, 6-1. Kentucky falls to 5-2. Notre Dame and USC, I caught the tail end of this one probably the last quarter because I was watching the LSU game. It was like that, that last quarter, they just opened up a can on USC. Crazy. Uh, Sam Hartman, 13 for 20, 126 yards, two touchdowns. Audric Estime, 95 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Jadorian Price, 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Xavier Watts, 15-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. That happened towards the end of the game. Uh, Notre Dame's defense, six sacks, three interceptions, two fumble recoveries. They held USC to 103 rushing yards. That's crazy holding USC to 103 rushing yards. All those great backs they had in the past, you would think that would never happen to a USC team. It did. They also held them to 199 passing yards in this one. Uh, Caleb Williams, 23 for 37, 199 yards, touchdown. Marshawn Lloyd, he had a rushing touchdown. Even though the Trojans have better numbers in a lot of the categories, uh, Irish defense just kind of shut them down most of the night. Uh, crazy, crazy things happen in college football. And really, you think about it, Notre Dame's a good team. They should have beat Ohio State. I blame that on the coaches. They totally let that one get away. Uh, but, uh, man, heck of a performance. And as a lot of people talk about, USC defense has been suspect. Uh, finally caught up with them. Here they finally deal with Notre Dame. Uh, Duke 5-1 beat NC State 24-3. Oregon State beat UCLA 26-24.
Uh, well, Hawaii lost to San Diego State 41-34. Like I said, Hawaii and Arkansas kind of mimic each other. Great offense, score a lot of points. Just can't seem to score enough to win. The defense can't seem to help them out. Uh, it's a shame, too, because they're good offenses. All right, some quick rundown of some FCS games. Harvard, they are 5-0 now. They beat Howard by 41. Davidson is 4-2. They beat Butler 35-33. Villanova is 5-2. They beat Elyon 21-0. Albany fell to 4-3 after losing to New Hampshire 38-31. Rhode Island fell to 4-3, losing to Richmond by 7 points. Uh, Furman 5-1. They beat Sanford 27-21. Penn is 4-1. They beat Columbia 20-17. Austin P is 4-2. They beat Gardner-Webb 41-14. North Dakota is 4-2. Beat their rival North Dakota State Bison uh, 49-24. North Dakota State is also 4-2. North Dakota State used to rule the FCS if you don't pay attention, and it's kind of faded off. A lot of other teams in the FCS are stepping up now. Uh, Pretty incredible what's going on. You should watch some of it if you don't. Uh, let's see where we... Oh, South Dakota. The South Dakota teams are damn good too. South Dakota, Montana, North Dakota. Those teams in those northern states are damn good in FCS football. Uh, South Dakota 5-1 beat Youngstown State 34-31. Illinois State is 4-2. They beat uh, Indiana State 44-7. Jackson State, they fell to 4-3, losing to Alabama State 24-19. Tarleton State, they fell to 4-3, losing to Eastern Kentucky, 41-35. Sacramento State beat Stanford a couple weeks ago, 5-1. They beat Northern Colorado, 21-13. Delaware is 5-1. They beat NC North Carolina, A&T, 21-6. Southern Illinois, 5-1. They beat Murray State, 21-6. South Dakota State, 6-0. They beat Northern Iowa, 41-6. Uh, South Dakota State, 6-0. They play South Dakota, who's 5-1, October 28th. You know that's going to be on TV. Uh, Eastern Illinois, they fell to 4-3, losing to Southeast Missouri State, 35-18. Fordham, 5-2, beat Stony Brook, 26-7. Chattanooga, 5-2, beat Mercer, 22-10. Uh, Central Arkansas is 5-2. They beat Stephen F. Austin, 24-21. Incarnate Word, lost their coach. Texas State, Texas State's doing great. Our Incarnate Word has not missed a step. They are 5-1. They beat Texas A&M Commerce 28-11. Tennessee State's 4-2. They beat Norfolk State 24-17. Montana State, 5-1. They beat Cal Poly 59-19. or 59 -19. And then Montana, their rival, they're 6-1. They beat Idaho 23-21. Idaho's 5-2. I watched a lot of that game before I fell asleep. Um... Uh, that was a damn good game. Idaho, not so sure about Idaho State. I don't think they're doing very good. But Idaho Vandals, who used to be FBS, uh, they're doing real good. They're having a great season. All right, so this week, uh, had some games already, Tuesday and Wednesday. On Tuesday, Liberty beat Middle Tennessee. Uh, they are 7-0 now. Western Kentucky lost to Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State 6-2 now. New Mexico State, they beat UTEP. Uh, they're five and three now. Looking for that second consecutive bowl game. Maybe they went last first time last year in a, in a long time. Looking to go again this year. They're five and three after beating UTEP last night. All right, so tonight, 6 p.m. ESPN, you got six and zero James Madison versus four and two Marshall. That could be a pretty good game. Um, both the teams are good. Both in the same area. Um, Thursday night football. That might be a pretty damn good game. I think it probably will be. Uh, tomorrow night, ESPN 2, 6 p.m., SMU. They're looking to go 5-2. and two. They're playing Temple. They should do it. Uh, never say never in college football, but you think they should, they, think they should probably do it. Uh, moving on to Saturday, big one everybody's talking about, 11 a.m. Fox, undefeated Penn State versus undefeated Ohio State in Columbus. Uh, everybody's talking, how's that defense, Penn State defense looks so good. How's it going to go against Ohio State's offense? They're in the horseshoe, too. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a damn good one. Uh, 11 a.m. on the if That doesn't, you know, get you excited. 11 a.m., ABC, 3-3. Three and three. Central Florida goes to 6-0, and oh, Oklahoma. 11 a.m. on CBS. Commander's, commander and 
Command and Chief Trophy, that's what they call it. Uh, part of the little play there. 6-0 Air Force at 3-3 Navy. Uh, 11 a.m. ESPN 2, 4-2 and Memphis at 2-5 and UAB. 11 a.m. ESPN, 3-3 three three Missouri State, or Miss 3-3 three three Mississippi State at 2-5 and five Arkansas. Remember what I said? With K.J. Jefferson and Will Rogers, if they were on other teams, would it be better for them? Because they're great quarterbacks. I mean, you got to admit it. You've seen, we've seen them play the last few years. You just wonder how they'd be doing on different teams. Uh, 11 a.m., Big Ten Network, 5-2 and two Rutgers at 2-4 and four Indiana. Wonder how much longer Tom Allen's going to be around. 11 a.m. ACC Network, 3-3 three three Boston College at 3-3 three three Georgia Tech. 11 a.m. CBS Sports Network, 2-5 Western Michigan at 5-2 Ohio. 1 p.m. ESPN Plus, 2-4 Louisiana Monroe at 4-2 Georgia Southern. 2.30 p.m. ABC. Disappointing 4-2 Washington State team who got waxed by Arizona goes to 5-1 Oregon who's pissed off because they lost to Washington and a damn good football team at that. Man, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know to think about that. I don't know if I feel bad for Washington State for what's fixing to happen or if Washington State's going to turn things around and make it interesting and play like they have been. Not the last couple of weeks, but how they have been this season. Uh, that could be an interesting one. 2.30 p.m., CBS. What do they call it? The third Saturday in October. 5-1 Tennessee at 6-1 Alabama. No one's given Tennessee a chance. Um, I kind of see why, but still, it's a big, important game that's got a lot of history. Man, you just never know. Uh, and Alabama's not Alabama either. So, uh, 2.30 p.m., SEC Network. 2-4 uh, South Carolina. That's 6-1 Missouri. Just doesn't get any easier for the Gamecocks. 2.30 p.m., ESPN2. 3-3 three three, North Texas at 5-1 Tulane. 2-30 on NBC. 3-3 uh, three three, Minnesota at 6-1 Iowa. Really thought Minnesota would be a lot better than they are this year. 2-30 on FS1. 4-2 Wisconsin at 3-4 Illinois. 2-30 on ESPN. 4-2 Oklahoma State at 4-2 West Virginia. Uh, that might be a good one. 3 p.m. on Fox. 5-1 Texas at 3-3 three three, Houston. 3 p.m. ESPNU, 6 and 1 Toledo at 6 and 1 Miami of Ohio. Good Mac matchup right there. Uh that might be that might be a good one worth it. Might be interesting than the other ones, even the big headliners, like Texas and uh or Tennessee and Alabama. Who knows? At least, at least keep an eye on the score. Um 5 30 p.m. on the CW network, 1 and 5 Virginia at 6 and 0 North Carolina. Uh Virginia, man. After everything that happened last year, you just got to feel bad for him being, being one and five. Uh, anyway, 6 p.m. ESPN, 5-1 Ole Miss at 3-3 three and three Auburn. Auburn really wants to win bad. They need, they need a win bad. Uh, I just don't know if they'll get against Ole Miss. 6 p.m. FS1, 3-4 Texas Tech at 4-2 BYU. Texas Tech, another one wants to win bad. 6 p.m. ESPN2, 4-3 TCU at 4-2 uh, Kansas State. Remember what's game last year in Fort Worth? That was probably one of the best games back and forth all the way to the end of the game. Don't know if it's going to be like that this year, but that one last year was pretty pretty damn good. Uh, 6.30 p.m., NBC, 7-0 Michigan versus 2-4 and four Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State, they're just a dumpster fire right now. It is a rivalry game, but if Michigan State was decent or good, I would say, hey, could be a pretty good one. But with as bad as they are, man, I just, I just don't think that's going to be a good game. But, I mean, I could be wrong. Who knows? Uh, 6.30 ABC, 5-1 Duke versus 6-0 Florida State. Riley Leonard's coming back. See how good he is in that one. Uh, 7 p.m. Fox. This is probably, if Rising isn't back, like we've heard little rumors about, this is where... This is where Utah could probably lose the game. Uh, five and one Utah, six and one USC. Um, like I said, we all know without rising, Utah just isn't scoring the points like they used to. You know, USC's pissed off. Um, you know, Lincoln Riley got on them this week about what happened at Notre Dame. So uh, 
I mean, Utah's a good team, but man, without rising, it's just, just not a great team like they were. Plus, USC is looking for payback um, for those times last year. So, uh, 7 p.m. ACC Network, 4 and 2 Clemson. At 4 and 2 Miami, that could be good. 9 30, you've got a couple late games here. Uh, 9 30. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, what I'm going to say is not good. <laughs> and one of them has the ability to maybe be good. So the first one, 9-30, FS1. 1-5 Arizona State goes to undefeated Washington there at Husky Stadium. Probably not going to be that good. Arizona State, just I don't know what their deal is. And then the last one, 9-30 p.m. ESPN. 4-2 UCLA, 2-4 Stanford. Uh, that's interesting. UCLA loses last week. Stanford on a high from beating Colorado, winning. That might be an interesting one to check out late at night. I mean, I don't care. Uh, college football's on late at night. I don't give a shit if it's two zero and six teams. I'll watch it because it's college football late in the Sunday morning. Uh, this one will be too, depending on where you live. So uh, I mean, I'll watch. I'll probably watch that one. I, I'm a fan of Washington, so I think they're probably going to beat Arizona State, but. Anyway, maybe I'll just go flip back and forth. All right, so a few FCS games that are pretty interesting also. 12 p.m., ESPN Plus, 5-1 Lafayette versus 4-2 Holy Cross. 1-30 on ESPN Plus, 5-1 Furman at 5-1 Western Carolina. Uh, 2 p.m., ESPN Plus, 6-0 South Dakota State at 5-1 Southern Illinois. And once again, I think... Uh, ESPN is finally realizing that people do watch FCS football because this is like the third week in a row of an FCS game with good teams. 9.30, ESPN 2, if you don't want to watch those FBS ones. 5-1, Montana State at 5-1, Sacramento State. So, I mean, there you go. you got three late games to choose from. Uh, I'd probably watch the FCS one and check back on the others because that one, 5-1, Montana State, the 5 1 Sacramento State. It's probably going to be a pretty good game. All right, so that's it. Um, stay busy. In the weekend, they'll be here before you know it. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back next week to go over things that happened this weekend and the preview the next weekend. Uh, one thing that sucks, though, the season's half over. Uh, man, it goes by fast because you enjoy it so much. But yeah, it's we're, we're at the halfway point. So uh, we got we got several more weeks left, but before you know it, the end is going to be here. It's going to be all bummed out again. But let's enjoy it while we can. We'll see you next time.